Hey, good morning. Um, cause I'm a Fury here. And once again I'm talking about Metal Gear Survive. As you can see on my screen here, whatever to I'm pointing, but it's going opposite directions. You get it, you can see it here that I've been looking up Survive and I've also been getting feedback from a lot of people also stating about reading, just reading about how they feel the game is a cash grab, which is like one of the most loosely thrown around terminologies when it comes to um, a spinoff of a series but see the thing about Metal Gear I understand Metal Gear Solid wasn't into Metal Gear growing up I just it wasn't my cup of tea you know I'm talking about the NES games it was just at, at the age I was in 1987 I was nine years old uh, the game rented it from the store it was do too difficult didn't understand it you know I was used to Contra that's the type of game I thought it was initially. Um, I give it to Hideo Kojima. He was ahead of his time when it came to that. And he stuck with this franchise. And it was his baby. It was his passion project. And it blew up for Konami in ways that we could not have fathomed. Not even Konami could have. But all good things have to come to an end. But we kind of understand, yes, we already know Konami is a shitty company. That has been, that goes without saying, all right? That, you know, they've been actually rated one of the worst, how they treat their employees. And that's why a lot of people left, even the staff of Castlevania, because they had a vision of taking the um, Lords of Shadow series into a, a good direction to, you know, revitalize the whole um, franchise. But Konami had other plans, you know. It was thinking pachinko dollars, of course, as usual. Given, you know, look at the circumstances with um, the Snake Eater pachinko. How they made beautiful cutscenes. We just, like, were just blow for blow. Reenactment of the original PS2 version of Snake Eater is just done in such a beautiful way. And you would, you just sit there and like, why aren't we getting this game remastered? to look like this and not just upgrading it as so but then we got other people which I have who will, I'm friends of who will say like you know that's why I hate consoles today because everything is fucking remastered everything they don't have no new games out right now um yeah well I get it with the Metal Gear Solid fans we this is a nostalgia to this it's a nostalgia to the series so um we we want new games for it and a solid thing and we want them with Hideo Kojima but we look at this like it's totally Konami's fault and I look at it like no no you Hideo Kojima struck out to make one of the most ambitious games to fill in the gap leading from Big Boss Naked Snake story into Solid Snakes and Metal Gear and what we ended up with, with with Metal Gear Solid 5 was a game, one of the best playing Metal Gear Solid games ever. Arguably the best playing one. But it felt empty, you know, you know, maybe it was the episodic formula to it. Maybe it was because we I just found out that Kiefer Sutherland recorded so much dialogue and Hideo Kojima was like, no, no, cut, cut. We're not going to use that. We're going to go in a different way with that. Um, Even Troy Baker has confirmed that when he tried to make Ocelot a little bit more familiar to the Ocelot we know from Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 4, we ended up with um, Hideo Kojima didn't want that. It's like every... It was a lot of inconsistency. We had a... We had like a obnoxious ocelot and snake eater and then we ended up with this um the more collective cool uh silent badass well not silent but the more of a a more calm collective ocelot and metal gear solid um five phantom pain and then we ended up with revolver ocelot which you get where I'm going. Then we ended up with Liquid Ocelot. And it's just like, we understand. We get it, Hideo Kojima. We get it that he is a chameleon. He's a triple, 
quadruple agent, whatever. He's just playing the size of war with it. And we get we get it. But the it's Ocelot, alright? This is the same character. This is not Sid from Final Fantasy where the name is the same and the character just looks different and it's just a staple name. This is Ocelot. And just a lot of things that went wrong with Phantom Pain. That, and I love the shit out of Phantom Pain. I play it every day. Almost every day. I log in. Um, people have been going into my bases and stuff. Successful. Um, my defenses have been successful. Sometimes they aren't. But I always got men to replenish. And I always go at the resources. And I make sure that... You, you, you get what I'm saying. I, it's an immersive experience. And um, it just was a lot to be desired about that game and Hideo Kojima has to be um he has to be, take the blame for the stuff that we don't desire the game the stuff that was left out of it it's not just Konami's fault all right he had the deadline for this game there was things cut out of it that mission 51 and how Konami right now post Hideo Kojima's departure right now Konami just feel like that is irrelevant to this story. So, give me a fucking break, Konami. Alright? Give me a fucking break. Let me get on Konami this time, too. Give me a break. You telling me that you can't... That Sahelanthropus disappears with Eli and the Floating Boy, which we all know is Psycho Madness and Liquid Snake. They just disappear into the sky. Uh, Metal Gear, that big... It's just to never be seen again or heard it from again in the Metal Gear Solid canon. And 51 was the end of that story. We get to see how Eli and Psycho Man is escape and they grow up together and revenge is stemming. And you know, we already can feel in from that point that Eli was discovered by the, um, by the British and they took him in, trained him. He did a lot of wet works growing up, lived in the shadows. We get that. He explained the rest of that. But to not finish 51, to not get to use the Metal Gear, the Battle Gear, that we just sit there and we see that Emmerich finished and we just sit there like, why can't we use this? Um, just to have it replaced with a bunch of the same missions at higher difficulties, which I refuse to fucking play. Because, number one, that's bullshit. Number two, those could have been other missions to finish the chapter three and four. And just, number three, it's a waste of goddamn time. It, it's just a waste of time. It does not progress the story at all. Okay? So, we get the ending. We, we also saw, okay, the man who sold, you know, who sold the world and we see that you just turn out to be some indiscreet medic and this was supposed to be some symbolic way of Kojima passing the man of Big Boss to you because you're the player, you put in the time, you're also Big Boss, you control it. I get the metaphorical meaning of what he did, all right? I don't have no problem with that. And we get that it changes to Out of Heaven, but, oh, you know, I was looking at what culture I believe it was. And they actually, or someone online actually had a good, a f better ending to that. After that was shown, you actually seen young Solid Snake swimming up into outer heaven. And then he look into the camera and says, kept you waiting, huh? That would have been cool. And that's just the way that could have ended leading right into the original Metal Gear for the MSX. Because the NES version, we all know was shit. Um, it was not Metal Gear. You didn't even get to face Metal Gear. They, they replaced Metal Gear with blowing up a super computer. Or some dumb shit like that. Um, but anyway. He didn't finish that game. That was just as much on him as it was with um, Konami. And we just hold... Kojima like he's a god and yes he's the king of uh misinformation and mystery and and stuff like that. He keeps people intrigued. I get that. And then he backs it up with his gameplay. With his games. He backs up. I'm not denying that at all. But he 
takes 50 percent to me he takes 50 percent of the blame for the reason why metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain ended the way it was and now let's get to survive yes it's being developed as using the same engine as um metal gear solid 5 it's a it's a spin-off it's a companion piece it's not the next metal gear game it's a companion piece that's why the v as you can see and metal gear survive the v inside of that is um basically a five as you can see here as i point here that v is a five for a reason because it's just a span of it and people are like, oh my god it's just the same stuff i saw in part five combined with this we don't know how the finished game gonna be we could have known this was a tech demo to show us what the um what the game is going to be capable of with the gameplay and nobody even stops to understand look i can understand why part when the base went down in shambles while part of mother base of um you know msf mother base went through the portal and we can understand that poor wormholes have different times to them this is why we possibly will see stuff in five from, I mean, from Phantom Pain and vice versa, or like I said, it's probably just this is a TGS tech demo to show us the gameplay. And they also stated that with this, with all the soldiers that was abandoned, some of them made it through the wormhole, and it affected them in this way, which turned them to what looks like these zombie-like creatures. But during the, nobody, I guess, me a few people didn't observe that. They were faulting a lot of these zombies out. And we don't know where they go yet. Do they go to Mother Base? Do, do the survivors figure out a way to cure this? Or do they figure out faulting them away back into the regular realm where Phantom Pain and Ground Zeroes exist will reverse it? We don't know all of that yet. And I'm not saying like, oh my God. Uh, this is the best game ever. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna buy it. But what, from what I'm seeing and stuff, it, it's a mashup. It's a mashup of Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, it's a mashup of uh, what can I say? Um, a few genres. It's like what, what's the like the I, I I feel like Dead Island because you can customize your weapons and make stuff on the fly. These are survivors, and then you gotta understand, you know, all those people you capture. All those soldiers that got special abilities and skills, you actually play with them, and now you get to see those abilities um, being put to use to survive. All right? Am I trying to sell a game to you? No, I'm not. I'm just trying to say, think about what this game is. If this game is just a companion piece and it's going to be thirty dollars, forty, and stuff like that, that's really not that bad, especially if it's coming sometime in 2017. All right, and we got people sitting here with the biggest fucking hypocrisy. I've went into a debate on YouTube, um, and some guy was like, "Forty dollars? That's too much money. This is a cash grab." You the same person who paid forty fucking dollars for Hideo Kojima's Ground Zeroes, which was just a extended demo. The same thing you accuse this game of being an extended DLC. Basically, what Ground Zeroes was just an extended demo of the game that you paid top dollars for, and I would think I would like to think that they put some of that money they made towards the development of Phantom Pain, or did they? Because the game didn't finish, and then Konami and Kojima, because of them not seeing out the eye, the game got cut short. And who lost out on it? We did, and to just totally blame Konami about this. It, it makes no sense to me at all. You know, you, you people want to believe what you want to believe about Konami and stuff. And yes, they are a bad company because now they really show that they don't give a fuck about AAA titles at all. They don't give a fuck about the fans. But this is not just all they for. I'm just, I'm, I'm just keep it, I'm keeping impartial here. It's just not all they for, all right? And, um... Yes, they did a lot of dickish things to Kojima, but he let us down as the fans because he didn't fight 
with tooth and nail to finish this game. I know games that have been finished under deadlines and stuff, and a lot of stuff has been fixed via patch, which they've been doing. This game has been behind. I think he um, over-promised and under-delivered. Because he promised us that Solid Snake would be in this game. And we ended up just getting the skin of him from Metal Gear Solid. And poly and exact polygons and all. I did not want that. I didn't know that shit was pointless to me. I wanted to see David. Young 12 year old David. We saw Eli already. Oh, but people can be like, oh well... We saw enough of Solid Snake as an adult. Maybe this was Eli. So Eli was a punk. He was just a little sniveling brat and stuff who knew, like his character, his story arc in his game is that he some he he knew. Maybe when he escaped, he got information of who he was cloned from, which probably so. And he resented Big Boss or something. And he just was. I mean, he. You get to see why he became Liquid Snake, and you get to see that okay, he came from a really snot-nosed little punk to what we know as Liquid Snake. Um, we wanted to see Solid Snake as a child too, because Solid Snake was like the polar opposite. It seems like he basically he was raised by different people. He became a great soldier. Didn't care about recessive or dominant genes of big boss because he didn't know he was a clone until he was an adult all right he did not know he was a clone so though he he was the recessive twin and that's i forget solidus was um uh, uh a perfect clone he was an unaltered clone nothing done to him he was he was from a different carrier you know eva from snake eater is liquid and um Solid's um she carried them. So but Solid's was carried from a, a different um a different mother. But I'm going north topic topic here, alright? So we wanted uh, I know I have for fact, I don't know about we I don't know who I'm speaking for. I'm just saying a lot of people wanted to see Solid Snake. I think he had intentions of putting them in his game, but a lot of stuff ended up in the cut room floor. And we th we we know a good deal of it, and this goes beyond Mission Fifty One. It's just cutscenes, it's dialogue and stuff. But that's according to everyone um, who's been following the development of this game, watching the trailers and so. That only scratches the surface of how much stuff was cut from this game. And um, like I said, it's a great playing game, but it just feels it feels empty. And I'm not saying that post beating the game. I'm just saying it um, from the fact that it just feels that way. Now I get, and that now, now I look at it, it's just like they was doing a lot of foreshadowing, telling you that you weren't playing as the real boss. You were basically playing as his doppelganger, who isn't the real big boss. So we're gonna treat him accordingly, like when it comes to. Um, there's no, there's barely any dialogue, there's barely any emotion at all. We know him and Quiet kind of had a thing for each other and stuff. We, that was easy to tell. She was in love with him and stuff, but she couldn't, she couldn't say until she chose to save his life by, um, calling the helicopter and then before becoming contagious to everyone else, she left. And disappeared into the um the desert, never to be seen ever again, um in Metal Gear Solid history at all, and that's the thing about retconning this series. It's a lot of thing when you retconning, you setting up what's gonna happen with the next game going forth. So now look at it. It's 2014 in the Metal Gear Solid history. That's where it ended at, with Solid Snake living out his last days before he deteriorates and dies. Um, Raiden mentioned him in um, Revengeance. He didn't mention that he was dead or alive. He just mentioned he was the greatest soldier he's ever, one of the greatest soldiers he's ever known. And how he sets his mind on the mission and he gets it done. Which we saw in Guns of the Patriot. Because even with a, a withering body, Solid Snake got it done. 
and stuff with the help of Otacon and everybody and stuff he still got it done he took pain like a champion everything but like I was saying with Metal Gear Solid survive it's too early to tell but it looks like it can be lots of fun for now it does look like it's lots of fun. It can be lots of fun. I'm waiting to see more in this game. I'm interested in the gameplay. I like game. I, I enjoy the shit out of like Dead Island and the um and games such as you know holding off hordes like Gears of War. And that, even though this is not Gears of War, it's just the fact that you like horde mode. You see when you set up missions, you're trying to open the wormhole and get supplies and things like that. It it looked like it's gonna have a lot going on in this game. So if it's is thirty or forty dollars, it might just get my purchase, depending on what I've seen the months to come. And I'm just saying, choose like, like, be more open-minded about this. I understand that Hideo Kojima is not working on it, so you just feel like it's just gonna be a, a the bastard offspring of um his work. But name, there's a lot of franchises that the original creator left and they still went on to have success and um there's a lot of them there's a few I mean like look at Castlevania look at I can't even think right now I just got off of work it's just early it's just kind of early in the morning but there's a few you can look them up there and you know some of them do lose they they lose they punch because they got they got people to come in and just try to emulate what the last person started you know the only thing I see familiar with um survive is that the engine is going to be it's the same engine that they use in the Fox engine or so for Metal Gear Solid 5 but it looks like it's trying to do its own thing and that I do commend them for I do commend them for that but anyway I'm gonna cut this one from here I think I've said my piece about it just Look, just pay more attention to what's coming down the line with the game because it's a possibility you might find something in this that you enjoy. I, I see some things, I want to know more about this game, and um, I know that it's not solid, it's not tactical espionage action. We get, I, I get that. Revengeance is lightning bolt action, there's different genres, there's Metal Gear thing, and it look like this one is survive this is um tactical survival um and then we got tactical espionage action then we got um lightning bolt action with writing so there's different things in this universe of metal gear to look forward to if konami can get their heads out of their asses and um fucking give us a, a bona fide sequel that doesn't suck and even if you don't give us a sequel and you don't want to there's so much about Metal Gear that needs to be retconned. All right, now that we extend, we, we as the gamers have witnessed and played through so much elaborated canon from Big Boss. There's just no way he could have went out as easy as he did. And um, I'm talking about Venom Snake and the legendary Big Boss, both of them. There's just no way they could have went out this easy. And I understand back then the original Metal Gears they were limited because of their gameplay, but now you got a chance to actually relive the legend of Solid Snake in the right way. Okay? To see why he became the legendary soldier, why he retired um after the events of Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. We you know, you can do that. If you don't want to do Metal Gear Solid 6 give us Metal Gear colon Reborn or not don't use Reborn but you get what I'm trying to say you Metal Gear dot dot boom whatever title it is you know Metal Gear out of heaven or something like that uh, things like that you know give us something just re if you don't want to do six just reimagine Metal Gear with all the canon that was lined up before but just with and this new using this Fox engine get it going you got the team there they look like 
the team to survive look like they can help out whatever new team they look like they might be they look like they know what they're doing with what what started and just create a story get some writers on this and stuff and this was a simpler time in Metal Gear we don't need no twist about uh, a we, this is Metal Gear. We don't need all these plot twists. We already know how it goes. We just want that fresh gameplay. We want a more elaborate gameplay from so we can this generation can relive Metal Gear. All right, the original. And I want to relive it because I just felt like there was I wanted I wanted just just so much potential this game had. It was ahead of its time and it was limited by the graphics of its time and it was still able to put out. A good a game that had a cult following, just like Police Knots and Snatcher. That you know, that's just Hideo Kojima how he do. But he's moved on. Konami needs to move on. They want to continue the franchise. They got to do something to win back the respect and the trust of the fans, like myself and like anybody who's watching this who's a Metal Gear fan, just in general. We want that game. We want that, right? We just want the game to continue, and if you don't continue with, um, with, with you're going to continue without Hideo Kojima, we want the games to still be good, we want somebody great to take over. I mean, look at, um, for example, Resident Evil, after Shinji Mikami disappeared for a while, I believe he, I believe he came back, did he work on Resident Evil 4 or so? I believe so, then I think 5 and 6 Kobayashi took over that and stuff and say what you want about five and six being two um being action oriented five was a hit game six didn't pre perform like they expected but it sold millions and millions of copies it was a a hit amongst the modders on pc and even they even brought in the characters for left for dead 2 it had a lot of life after its initial release and sales that's why they put it out Remastered for twenty dollars right now for a new generation because people fans may have hated it, but it did well. It actually did better than we thought it was. Even the you know the fans hated it, but me about it, it wasn't as good as five or four, but it was it was a solid game. It just tried it tried to appease to too many fans and stuff and. I could talk about my dislike for seven so far, but I already made a video about that. I might make another one, but right now let's stick with Metal Gear. And in closing, I say, look more to survive. All right, and you see this? You see like these um, memes? This the fans are like, we used assets everywhere. We get it. Like they really just feel like the game is a cash grab. Rightfully so. They can feel that way, but. They, you know, I guess a lot of them are confused and think that this is going to be the new way Metal Gear is going to be played. But this is just, like I said, once again, a five, a companion piece to five. What they, if they do six, that's on them. If they remake, if they remake the original two Metal Gear games, I would be in heaven with that, out of heaven that is. But. Either way, this, this the franchise is going to continue in some way, shape, or form, and they might they might have us in limbo thinking it's not, but survive. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna do something with them, all right. And we don't know what that is yet, given the success on it. They trying to start small scale. This is Konami's way of testing the waters to see if something like this can sell, so they can be like, you know what. Am I gonna? We can continue with this, and Hideo Kojima here can just make fun of it and say there was no zombies in it. But what was the soldiers? What did the um the metallic Arcade do to the soldiers? Turned them into wandering puppets, which pretty much were like zombies. So I guess we get to see a worse version of that, because they this game has been all about the craziest outlandish fiction we've ever seen and stuff so for people to say these type of creatures and um survive is just outlandish is bullshit they not because we dealt with it through five we dealt with 
a vampire like guy who was having a romantic affair with a male colonel uh, a male colonel or sergeant or whatever from the marines in Metal Gear Solid 2 uh, then we also dealt with Colonel Vogan having a boyfriend we, we dealt with a lot of stuff we dealt with a woman who heart was on the other side so I'm talking about fortune that is and we, we dealt with uh, a cyborg ninja a few of them even writing is a cyborg ninja now um we, we dealt with a lot of stuff right I mean for hell look Venom Snake in 1984 Venom Snake has a, a super advanced bionic arm which can which gives him more mobility more healing um depending on the bionic arm it gives him abilities to either electrocute people or either draw them to him and just do a lot of things this game has always been just outlandish fiction that just happened to be in the world of tactical espionage action but look at that I mean he put wandering puppets and phantom pain which are like zombies so for him to say something like this is just, I, I just think it's just bullshit but that's just me anyway thank you for watching Kazama Fury's out I see you next time and remember keep watching what you want keep gaming the way you want and keep being you peace out